Hello, TPP Universe. I know that you are excited to get the night underway, and before tonight's show begins, I would like to address a few things. First, I would like to address my husband, Die Hard, as he stated that he gave Cimarron the past three weeks off. It was not known to anyone but Die Hard. Sigley was keeping Cimarron off of the show for his own personal gain. So for the first time since the beginning of January, Cimarron will be speaking tonight, right after our main event, which will feature the current international champion explicit facing Jamal Johnson. The second issue I would like to address is that there is no no number one contender for Cimarron's title. Unfortunately, I do not have the authority to name a number one contender. So when Cimarron comes out later tonight, he will announce who will be facing at breakdown for the TPP championship. I thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the show. Tonight as our TPP superstar always put their bodies in danger to entertain you. Well, Tyson, I, I can't believe what we're hearing. Uh, from Melinda Guerrero, the power plant owner. Well, I mean, we knew Dara was up to something fishy, and it looks like uh, he was literally trying to protect Samararo in the sense that he he was, you know, trying to keep the belt secure and keep him out of danger. Uh, evidently, but Melinda just threw Diehard under the the uh, under the bus there, so to speak. She just flat out said he was lying and that he was trying to just keep him off the show to keep him away from the fans, and, that, and that's not right. Well, I mean, you never know, because it could be simply that Samararo chose to stay away because Die Hard paid him, paid him a certain amount of money to, you know, stay protected and stay away from all the, you know, the wrestling. That is, that is true, and, you know, switching gears here, going right into the action, we've got uh, Damian Wallace starting off the show here, and, you know, and I know when Damian Wallace was working the, uh, the developmental, you know, I... I don't like calling him part of the chocolate drops. I don't like that tag team name, but this young man's getting uh, quite a bit of showing within TP in the TPP universe. Oh, I mean, he's become the guy that uh, TPP has gone to if they want to it's try. Basically, they're trying to push him, it seems, to be a breakout guy. I and guess so, and looks like he's asking for a mic here. <laughs> What is gonna happen? What we're gonna hear from? How's it going, my Uncadelics? It's your boy Damian Wallace here, and tonight I go out to that ring and I take on the man known as the Initiator, and I'm gonna show him. I'm gonna show him just why they call me the Funkadelic, the Disco King, the Bees Knees, Damian Wallace. I'm gonna hit him with the Funkin' Go Round, and I'm gonna rock the crowd. Heads go down as they begin chanting my name. And that's all I gotta say. So I'll see you cats tonight when I go out to that ring and I show the entire power plant universe why Damian Wallace should be watched for. Catch you later, baby. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, well, this man has been developmental. He's finally making his debut on the main show, and Damian Wallace is a gonna have a little bit of trouble he is the initiator and he is you can see he's a little bit mentally unstable from his appearance just a little bit you know and and you know the the funny part is is um i i, oh, damn. I definitely he goes us exactly and i feel for damian wallace here because initiator is a he's a tough guy <laughs> tough mentally deranged all the above he even he's so tough but it's probably so dull that he could be seriously injured and he'll still keep going just because he doesn't realize how badly hurt he is that is very true um very reminiscent of uh mick foley putting his body yes. on the line except this guy's in a little bit of better shape than mick foley that is true well here we go i mean damian wallace waited he waited a second there but look at this he's already starting to dance against somebody oh. that could tear him apart yeah, I mean, that's what he does. Initiator's freaking out. What is Initiator doing? He, he's hitting himself. He just punched himself in the forehead like four times. Twice. He's, <laughs> he is freaking out right now. David Walsh just keeps oh. dancing. Initiator. Oh! Big initiator. <laughs> oh, it'll roll up. And Damien Walsh isn't going to let him get it that easily, even if he is that big. Ooh, 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 ooh. He planted him. 
Oh, a nice little leg drop right there. Oh my god, he is... He has lost his mind. Oh, Wallace caught the leg, but... Wait a second. Oh, but Initiator swatted away that drop kick. And wait a second. Initiator's got oh. him up on the shoulders. This is his finishing move. Mm. Oh! This one might... I think this is Dump. over. <laughs> Into the Dump cover. Dumped on his head. What? One, two... Three, and thanks for coming, Damian Wallace. Better luck next time, Initiator, who is... He was entered into the Rumble, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And he... he and he's the... One of the developmental entrants. But now he's actually on the main show. Um, in the Rumble match. It, exactly, and... Why we got a few moments here, not to uh, take away from Initiator's victory tonight, but, um... Last week, when you were not able to be at the table, um, You know, you, you were signing some contracts and doing all kinds of behind the scenes stuff uh what was the uh you know what was some of that about can you tell us no there's not much i can say right now but i can say that a breakdown you'll uh you'll be pleasantly surprised about what's going to be happening in the future of tpp well that's that's good that's good and then uh you know i mean right now we're gonna we're getting ready to go to the back here for uh Something that's going... Okay, we got Junior and uh, Suicide Kid warming up. So uh, we'll see, you know, what's going on here and getting ready for tonight. Hey, boys. Look at me. Yeah, that's right. You're looking at a bona fide champion. You're looking at Land Insane of better days ahead. And I know you two have been... You haven't been running your mouth. You've been pretty respectful, but... You disrespected my integrity by thinking you deserve a shot at my championships. So please tell me in what universe and in what mindset you think you deserve a shot at better days ahead. Well, well, hold on a second, okay, Landon? Okay, you and Jacob Keys, you guys are great tag team champions, and yeah, you guys, you guys won two times in the same night. I, I give you credit for that, okay? You Damn right. That, you did, you did. But you need to understand one thing. My, my father, Diehard. Okay, we all know about the, the heated history he has with everybody in the back. I'm not like that. I'm not going to beat you up or nothing. I'm, I'm here for the competition. I'm here. Well, see, that's your problem. You're going to have to beat me up. And unfortunately, when you try that, I'm going to knock your ass out with the O-N-E, the one. I, I just, I don't think so. I, I firmly believe that mine and Suicide's kid speed will... I firmly believe you're a little punk ass that doesn't deserve to be in the same ring as me and Jacob Keys, Mr. Anthony Guerrero Jr. I don't know. I guess we'll just find out because we have a guaranteed tag team title match. I'm not saying it's not guaranteed. I'm just saying it's a guaranteed ass whooping once you get in the ring with BDA. Well, you can BDA yourself on out of here because we got a match tonight. We're going to show you why we are going to become the tag team champions. At, at breakdown. Good luck, good luck beating our scraps from last week, punks. Wow, those are big words. Um, you know, from better days ahead towards uh, Anthony Guerrero Jr. and Suicide Kid. I mean, uh, Landon Saint, he's coming into his own. You know, he's uh, yeah, he's he's getting a little feisty with everything that seems to be going on right with uh, Suicide Kid and uh, Anthony Guerrero Jr. He, he's literally, he, like I said, he's coming, like we've said before, you know, he's, uh, he's a perfectionist. No wasted motion. I mean, no, no wasted words either. I mean, he was right there toe for toe with Junior. <laughs> and, I mean, I guess, I guess it's not saying as much as we'd like to say because Junior, I mean, although he's a, a solid wrestler, he's not an imposing force. So I guess Lance Saint looks at, is looking at it as an opportunity to, uh, as an oppor ah, as an opportunity to get get some smack talking in before the pay per view. That is very true, and and like you said, you know, um, this is going to be a big trying point for uh, Junior and Suicide because they're facing the biggest team that they've ever faced, you know, uh, weight wise in McLeod and Frost. And these guys, they've fallen on some bad luck, but they're a solid team. They're an impressive team. Uh, I've seen them on the indies. I've seen them do all of this stuff, and needless to say, they are they are legit. They are falling on some rough times, running into BDA and the Serbians, and they were together. And so, and then Suicide Kid and uh, Anthony Guerrero Jr. 
but these guys are legit, and once they can get on the same page, then they're, they're future tag team champions. Exactly, and Suicide Kid and Kent McLeod here starting this off, and kind of looks like a stalemate here. Suicide Kid going hold for hold there with Kent McLeod, but, you know, we always talk about how much bigger McLeod is than uh, a lot of the guys in the back here, and he's just, he's got an, an imposing force, an imposing strength, and he's kind of going with that, but Suicide Kid's speed, you know, he's definitely got speed. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's how they're going to have to win this match, and that's what, how they're going to have to win the match against Better Days Ahead, because Lane Insane is usually the dominant force in the ring for BDA, and he's in a high flyer. He'll, he, he keeps people grounded, is his style. That is very true, and now Suicide Kid with a with a big reversal there, that quick uh, float over arm drag, and then a springboard attempt with uh, the body splash, but McLeod, again, too big and too strong, was able to swat him away. And and it's and now Kent McLeod making that quick tag into Justin Frost. He's got Suicide Kid on his shoulders with the uh, shades of uh, the Legion of Doom with the Doomsday device, the electric chair clothesline. And I mean that's that tagging history coming, and that's that effectiveness and the uh, efficiency of the Frost and McLeod duo. It's very very true. And then now Suicide Kid is reeling because Frost is picking up the pace and oh but McLeod just tripped him up pulled the rope down tripped him to the outside I mean again that's more of the tag team uh, McLeod had the wherewithal to pull down that rope as Frost sent him over in that direction and then Suicide Kid wasn't expecting him was sent flying over the top rope and hit hard on that very thin mat that is very true and and now like I like I was saying I mean Suicide Kid he's gonna have to do something he's got to try to get junior in this matchup because the more damage he takes and the more um that uh justin frost and kent mcleod tag in and out like right now they're tagging again and again they're going for that doomsday device clothesline and you know plants them they, exactly you know and the more that they do this um the more damage suicide kid is going to take and i'm not saying that suicide kid can't take the damage but this young man he's not He's not like The Rock. He's not like Stone Cold. He's not like anything like that. He's a, a normal superstar. Yeah, and he's not, like you just said, he's not a built to take damage. He's built to He's built to hit him hard, hit him fast, hit him quick, and get the match over uh, like as soon as possible. Now he... Now he's over the getting, top rope. Yeah, there we go. Oh, jumping back, like landed on his feet. Oh, and then uh, ducks under him, catches him with a big um, elbow right across the face. There was that was a beautiful uh, series there by Suicide Kid. Dude. Yeah, and I mean, like I like we were just talking about. That's what he does, and he, he uses his speed to um, to the cover here. Advantage. One, only a one count though. And now Suicide Kid gets spilled over to the outside from Kent McLeod, and and Junior's just kind of pacing, but now McLeod going to the outside, stomping but, away. Yeah, he dives right out there, and it's starting to work him over. Junior's getting his face and tries to shove him away, but McLeod is not listening. He's pretty much continue, continuing to stomp on Suicide Kid. Exactly, exactly. And then, uh, so now we've got Kent McLeod bringing Suicide Kid back into the ring here. He's got him on the apron. And now McLeod back into the ring, and I don't know. I mean, the thing is with Junior, I don't think he'd be that much of a threat to uh, Kent McLeod size-wise. Well, I mean, so. He's about half his size, so I think McLeod looks at him as exactly a big threat. And a nice little counter into a drop kick right there by Suicide Kid. Beautiful flying Manor from Suicide Kid, but again, he needs to get he needs to get that tag. He needs to tag in Anthony Guerrero Jr. Although. And I mean, I think that's what he's looking to do right now. He's he's working McLeod into the corner. He misses that drop kick as McLeod sidesteps it, but counters into a nice windmill spin kick. Oh, here we go. Junior getting tagged in. Much needed tag. Big right hand. Oh, wow. He knocked down McLeod, and then he just knocked Frost off the apron there. Wait a second. What's Junior doing here? Junior had his back turned to McLeod, and just like that, McLeod was able to turn it around into his favor. This is... Yeah. This it is what is. happens. That's that. it's inexperience on Junior's part. 
exactly. It's inexperience. I mean, he should have stayed focused, but now Junior up in the hurricane round of weight, he catches McLeod there with that um, that hurricane round. It looked like he was trying to place him on the ropes, but he came up a little too short. I mean, that's still not going to feel comfortable having your face ran right into the middle rope. Get, get somewhat scrubbing and shit. That's very, very true. And then uh, now McLeod taking a uh, point here, getting very aggressive with Junior and McLeod is, yeah, he takes him down with a very basic but dangerous armbar, uh, reverse And armbar. now he's stomping a mud hole in him. I mean, McLeod, McLeod oh wait, oh, Anthony Guerrero Jr. almost caught him with that crossbar, but McLeod had enough foresight to step back out of the way. But Junior is able to counter there, and now Junior going for the cover, hooks the leg, one, two, only a two count though on McLeod. Let's see. What is, and then now Junior with that pullback Hurricane Rana going for another cover here. One, two, only a two count. Again, I mean, the thing is, is Junior, the most Junior can get on a lot of these bigger guys is just body on body. He doesn't have enough um, mass to keep yeah. him down. <laughs> I mean, oh, Suicide that. Kid just took a spill from that back elbow that Kent McLeod just gave him. <laughs> It's all, it's all about the speed in this match, and if Suicide and Anthony aren't fast enough, then McLeod and Frost are most likely going to win this contest. That, that is very true, and then uh, Junior trying to keep the action quick. You know, he, he's doing the springboards, trying for those quick covers, but again, just body-on-body -body contact. I mean, he's getting a two-count, but they're not. it's not a very effective two-count. It's not a late two-count. It's a very early two-count. And now, what's uh, McLeod thinking? Or McLeod whips Junior to his corner. And now he's tagging in Justin Frost. And now again, they're going for that electric chair and that that clothesline, the, the Doomsday device. I mean, if it works, don't don't fix it. <laughs> this is very true. Now Frost into the cover. One, two, only a two count on Anthony Guerrero Jr. You know, and I... Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead, Mr. Williams. Oh, well, what I was going to say was, um, you know, I... I really, we really missed you out here last week. We really did because uh, we enjoy having you out here. I miss being out here. It's uh, I missed all the action stuff, but there were some technical things, some legal things, some business things that old Tyson Stage had to take care of. But now I'm back and I'm ready to call some some of this great action as we're seeing. Uh, that's great. And look at Junior, beautiful. Um, Going a vertical leap drop kick there, he kind of threw himself forward and then did a drop kick. And now Junior, the standing back side kick, and Suicide Kid is fighting uh, McLeod on the outside. So we've got Junior and Frost as the legal entrance or participants. Oh, Hurricane Runner from Suicide Kid. I mean, there's action going on inside the ring and outside the ring, and this is getting intense. Yeah, it's there's fighting everywhere. I don't know what to call and what to. Uh, <laughs> Keep my eye on. Wait a second, Junior! Quick roll up. Looks at one, two, three, and McLeod's back was turned. That is a oh, three wow. count. Oh wow! Anthony Guerrero Jr. and Suicide Kid just beat them because Ken McLeod took his eyes off of the prize and Frost got rolled up. Oh, that is not going to sit too well with McLeod. Oh, Frost cannot believe what just happened. I mean, that was a great contest that Anthony Guerrero Jr. and Suicide Kid were almost, it looked like, on the verge of losing. But like we like we said the whole match, they're using their quickness to um, get, you know, get ahead. Exactly. And I was just, I can't believe what we saw. That was great teamwork at the end there by Anthony Guerrero Jr. and Suicide Kid because they, they foresaw what was happening. And then they knew if they had McLeod distracted on the outside, they would stand a better chance of picking up the win from well I, I can't believe what we we've seen so far tonight uh, Tyson but this is gonna be one hell of a match if I don't say so myself we've got James Graydon you know former uh, Intercontinental Champion former Tag Team Champion facing TCO <laughs> TCO member facing exactly a TCO member facing tight who is on an impressive roll with only one loss on his record and we're going to see if James Braden is going to add another one to it. Well exactly and I'm, I mean I'm not saying that James can't do it and he's 
It's the past year of his life has been pretty rough. We're not gonna, we're not denying that in any way, shape, or form. But if there's any time where James needed to be focused, this is that time. He needs to, he needs to make an impact on Titan because Titan is a very opposing force. He's well, nothing, no, nothing good's gonna happen if you keep bringing in what's happening personally into the ring. Nothing good that comes from that. Even if you facing a guy you absolutely hate. Nothing good will come from that because you get frustrated, you get unfocused. What you need to do, leave all that on the outside, leave all that at home, leave all that, you know, in your room, walk it in the closet, whatever, and when you go in the ring, you, you just got to go out there with the mindset and beat this guy. That is very true, and I just... Oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be a barn burner. We don't see that and very often, but two big guys going. Remember, ahead. this is um, a hardcore series match, so there are basically no rules except it, you must win by pinfall and or submission. That is true, and, and now here we go. Look, look at that, the height difference alone. But look, oh my God, James Braden matched height and strength for strength. Look at that was that was intense. I mean, he only was able to do that that one time, and now Titan, you know, gaining control, but. Man. I mean, James Brand's not a weak person, but his strength is not going to match Titans more than that one time, in my opinion. Titan flipping him by his arms straight over his head like a ball oh man, and then a big punch. You know, and, and this is the worst part because, you know, I, I, I don't like saying it like this, but James Braden is one of the biggest superstars we have here in the power plant, other than Titan. You know, I mean, Extreme is a pretty big guy, but... James Braden, he's one of the larger guys we have, and Titan imposing his will on, on James. Yeah, I mean, with Titan, it's he's the biggest man. He like Extreme is probably the second biggest when you compare to height, mass, all built together. And so Extreme might be the only person imposing enough to maybe get Titan to question whether he can do it, but I doubt that even then, because Titan is absolutely the biggest and most intimidating force in TPP. Saying that, that used to be Brayden's moniker. He used to be the bad guy, the or the badass that everyone feared to face in the ring. That is very true, and and now Titan carrying that flag with pride. I mean, James, he's doing, I, he's holding his own right now against Titan, and we we talked about this numerous times, but um, it's known that James cannot, you know, really go. He really falters long. in the long run of a match. Exactly, and and we seen Titan. He was able to keep it going for you know twenty minutes in that fatal four way, and that was with three other men in the match. I mean, I I obviously think Titan has the advantage in this match. Braden has not had a stellar run, but that's I mean, like I said, but like I said earlier, it's probably because he's not leaving his personal life at the door. Only a one and count for James Braden there. I think me realigning with Die Hard and TCO, he's hoping that some some stuff gets cleared up for him. And hope, I mean, honestly, even though I don't agree with TCO's methods, hopefully um, things get cleared up for Braden. That is that is true. And now James Braden side oh. oh, on the on the steps there into the cover <laughs> one, two only a two count. I mean. He just smashed his head off the steel step with that back teardrop-like suplex. And, but, I mean, Titan's already back in control because he's a monster. I mean, that's pretty much the only way you can describe it. Oh, wait a second. What's Titan doing here? Titan getting up close and personal with the fans. He's... Wait a second. Is that... Is that a crutch? That's a crutch. Oh, oh man. my God! Oh! Over the back of his head. Jesus... And he picks him right up. He's not even going to give Brayden a second to rest. He immediately smacks that crutch over the back of his head and then picks him up. And he's going to power bomb him. Oh, my. Jeez, oh, Pete. Look at into the cover here. One, two. No, James right, Brayden kicks Billings, out. Tell me you did not just say jeez, oh, Pete. I, I did. That That's just, that's crazy. I mean, th this is turned into a, like. You white-ass boy. This is like a street fight. That's what this is. This this is a street fight with hardcore series implications. Now we have tables in the match. We have tables. Well, I mean, it, like I said, like it's a hardcore series match. I don't know what you expected. I don't. I don't know if you expected kittens and rainbows, but right now we got we got two of the hardest hitting and nastiest uh, sons of bitches in the power plant going at it for points to win the hardcore championship. Well, I, I guess in, in hindsight, this is James Braden's one opportunity that he has left to try to get 
you know, gold around his waist. And oh, Titan reverses while he was on the table. I mean, that's I'm, that's pretty big. With, ju with just a push of the leg, he shoves someone as strong as James Brigham back. And, and now Titan, uh, basic belly-to-back lift on... Um, Kind of nice little collegian wrestling move there. I don't I don't have any history record of Titan wrestling in high school or college, but you know that may may or not be true. This man is pretty private about his past. A that big is true. a big clubbing clothesline right there, right across the chest and neck of James Braden, and a nice STO sweep right back. They're both fighting back and forth. I mean, the question is, how long can both these men go? Because despite, you know, being very good at what they do, it, being that size has an effect on your stamina. And we're good. Exactly. And with with James Braden, I mean, I guess we could maybe give the stamina benefit to him because he's a little bit, he, you know, he's smaller. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't agree with that because of, because of, uh, I know he hasn't been training as much and all this stuff. So I think the younger... And he's older. I think the younger Titan, the um, the younger Titan, the fitter Titan, has a bigger stamina advantage than him. Well, did you see that flapjack that Titan did? I mean, James Braden yeah. is 270 pounds. You know, he threw him at least seven feet in the air, and he base planted on the you know basically a concrete floor. It, exactly. And now James Braden with that um, modified Roll. rolling suplex hooks the far leg. One. one, two. two. Nope. Only a two count. Titan, and he pops right back up and starts delivering a fury of punches. And now what? what's he doing with James Braden? He's got him up. Ooh! Oh, man. He threw him right over the steps right next to us over here at the announce table. My God. This is... this Like, 90% of this match so far has been on the outside. And we, we talk about this all the time, but that padding is not thick. Titan's got a cup of... Uh, something. I don't know if it's water or soda or beer or... Ooh! Oh, and he... Oh, <laughs> and then he slapped him. He slaps him with the cup in hand. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's hardcore. At least What's he's having fun. Though. to do? I Is mean, he... James Braden sidestepped him and got him in a, a waist lock and then right to that back suplex. So I guess the water or the beer or whatever woke him up. Well, if there was alcohol, we might see James Braden go into overdrive. <laughs> <laughs> now, Christopher, you need to keep it professional. That is that is correct. That is correct. Oh, Titans got him stunned. What? Oh, oh, jeez! Oh. oh my God! Oh. He flapjacked him. He threw him seven feet in the air. And he three fold right through the table. Now Titans calling him up. And Titans got him in the end of days. Oh, he's wrenching. But wait, normally his, his opponents already gave up. I mean, can James get out of this? this? That is the question. Can James, James get out of this? probably isn't even conscious right now after going through a table like that. He's getting wrenched. And yeah, he he taps. He there's James Brayden has to tap right there. And Titan. I, uh, <laughs> Titan dominates once again as he puts... Braden through the table, picks him up, and snaps him in half, just like everyone else he's faced. Exactly, and Titan holds a almost perfect record, other than that Fatal Four Way match. That's the only loss he's ever suffered, and most of his, that's the I think the longest match he's been in was against James. And I mean that Fatal Four Way is hard to count against him because he pretty much dominated the whole match up until the end. It, exactly, and you know now Titan heading to the back. And uh, I, I can't believe we're going to hear from Samararo a little bit later tonight. And, uh, you know, that's going to be great because I want to know what's really going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, I want to know if he's sold out or if he's still, you know, fighting die hard or what. Because as of right now, in my book, it looks like Samararo is, uh, you know, part of TCO or at least aligning himself with die hard. See, and, I, uh, I don't want to sure. believe that from uh, from our TPP champion, Samararo, but I am being notified um, that we need to cut to the backstage area. Something's going on. Die hard, die hard. Listen, man. I need to talk to you about my contract. I know when you trained me three years, three long, grueling years, you gave me this contract and you said you'll be the best. But you didn't want me to overshadow you. 
And unlike you, the fans enjoy me. They don't, they are booing me. They don't dislike me. So what are you getting at? Die hard, I need to grow into my own and be a man, be my own man. And I can do this. And although you think it's okay for you to send me out there to beat up on people, that's not the way it works. I am Jerry Graham. And that's one thing you need to understand. I'm smarter, I'm faster, and I will be better. So, breakdown is coming up. I got your email where you asked me to have James eliminate me when it comes down to me and him. I am not going to job to your brother-in-law. Now, I understand that you guys have a great big history. And I'm sure 2013 is going to be a great year for, for you and James. However, as of right now, I am no longer affiliated with the Chosen One. Are you kidding me? It's time for me to branch out on my own and become my own man. If you aren't down with that, well, <laughs> I got two words for you. Jerry Graham. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Are you being... Oh my god. Jerry Graham just left Die Hard hanging. <laughs> He just, told, he just told him off, pat him on the side, and said, uh, I'll be going now. Dyer doesn't know what to do right now. It, it seems like his plans are in a little bit of flux. Exactly. I mean, first his wife calls him out and says he's lying. His, his brother-in-law can't pick up the win, and now his protege is telling him. Exactly. It, this is bad for Die Hard. This is bad for Die Hard and TCO as I think there's only him, James Braden, and possibly Samurai left. And coming to the ring is the man who assaulted and injured his brother. One half of the Ser former duo known as the Serbians. It is Malcolm Serbian. He's uh, wearing the classic Indian headdress to honor his heritage and to honor his beliefs in the gods of nature. And he... Had, he honestly has not competed since uh, um, over the limit. Yeah, yeah. This is the first time we're getting to see Malcolm Serbian in action. And uh, so uh, we were told there was a little bit of a stipulation for this for Malcolm Serbian for, um, you know, what happened with his brother over the limit. Um, do you want to share this stipulation or do you want me to? Or Because of his actions at over the limit, we cannot, we cannot rightfully suspend him because of because of a you know his contract but his contract has been ratified so in future instances we can't suspend him and in this instance this is his punishment we put him against the most angry and most driven person in the power player right now that being sabbath with the loser of this match sabbath agreed to this as well the loser of this match will get the number one spot they will be the first entrant in the breakdown match yeah, and this is this is a big deal because if you enter number one, you have to go through everybody in the Rumble. Yes, and Sabbath agreed to it because and what he told me was it's either all or nothing. If you're not out there with something on the line then you, and the other guy has everything on the line, then it'll bite you on the ass. That, that is very true, and here we go. I, I don't, I'm not expecting this match to be too technical, I don't think. I mean, they, they want to make I quick mean, work. I, I expect it to be it fall into a technical pace after both these men try and do like some brawling to put away each other quickly because Sabbath is angry and frustrated at Samararo and how management is dealing with that situation while uh, Malcolm is obviously frustrated that he's he's going he's competing to avoid the number one spot number one entry spot and he's frustrated that people are booing him for his actions against what he did to his brother. That is very true and. I mean, my thing is, is I think, and I think you might agree with this, but Sabbath, when he when he starts getting frustrated or angry, he he's, loses his focus in his matches. He does, but he also gains this deadly edge to him where his moves hit a little bit harder, hit a little more. He's a little more quicker, a little more efficient, and uh, clothesline. Uh, not fall right into a little kick to the back and a cover. One, no, he gets out. Where hit, where his moves are a little bit sharper and so 
you know, it comes with the trade-off. He does lose focus, but he does gain some physical ability in the ring from the adrenaline and the anger. Well, we've seen this from Sabbath many times before. Duck under, off the rope, big bulls line. The psych out rebound suplex, and he doesn't even go from time to you know, catch his breath as he picks him up and jumps right back on the attack. You know, and this is, I, I love the, the high intensity action, you know, I just, as long as nobody's getting hurt and all that, all that good stuff, and I, I know everybody wants to try to dance on, step on their toes and be very careful this week because, uh, you know, next week is breakdown. Yep, next week is the big show. We find out, we find out who will win the, um, win the shot at the TPP championship. We will find out who Samara is going to be defending against. Um, later this evening, we're going to be fi we're going to find out if uh, Hazard or Explicit walks out with the international championship. We're going to find out if Better Days Ahead retains. We're going to find out a bunch of stuff, and and including the big announcement that we have uh, as Twilight was gone last week. That is very true, and and I'm I'm looking forward to break down, and I'm sure that all of you, all the fans, are looking forward to it. I know you're looking forward to it. We're going to have a booked week that week, but uh, you know these superstars, they. We, we've said this before too but they don't they don't take a day off no they don't they're always working they're always working hard and uh, that includes pay-per-views and house shows that is true and um, at the bottom of your screen you're gonna be seeing a list of some uh, some events that you will be able to catch um, Malcolm Serbian um, before breakdown so in a couple of house events and a couple of appearance be sure to uh, check out those buy some tickets and Enjoy the TPP. Enjoy the TPP uh, experience that we provide to local smaller venues. That yeah, exactly, and and so uh, you know that's just kind of the way that you know in large fault to Tyson Sage, he gives back right. to uh, the fans because uh, you know he loves the fans. We all love the fans. I love to please the people. Sorry, that was weird. <laughs> A nice no. punch by Serbia. I was watching. I was so into the match. I got distracted and forgot what the uh, always exciting Mr. Billings was saying. <laughs> and now uh, Malcolm Serbia trying to take control of this matchup on he rolls, Sabbath. Oh, he rolls behind him. Oh, he drives his neck right onto his knee, and now he's kicking away, raking his boot over the eyes of Sabbath, kicking out his face, and the, oh, what a quick into Gurry right there. Malcolm, you, this, the Malcolm kid can be quicker than a hiccup when he wants to be. Why? What is with all these sayings, Billy? Normally you're not this bad. Normally it's like, you know, an okay white boy saying, but these are like Grandpa from World War II saying, what's up with you tonight, Billy? That, that is from the legendary commentator Jim Ross. It is, but you're not Jim Ross, and we're not, you're not nearly as old as Jim Ross. <laughs> That is very true, but now Sabbath going... Mounting him and driving that left hand right into the dome of Malcolm Serbian. See, I think I think Sabbath is becoming, or he's getting into that, that zone we were talking about where he's lost, he's losing he hooks focus, the arms. but getting angry. Oh, a, a butterfly backbreaker right there. One of the one of the more aggressive and vicious maneuvers that I, you can you can do because you just some free falling after throwing him in the air onto your back and now Serbian climbs to the top at Sabbath. Cuts him off. Oh, wait a second, Sabbath. He's got him in a front face buster. Oh, oh. From the top. A jawbreaker. Rope. Top rope jawbreaker. One, One. Two. Only a two count, though. The official Terry Gates only counting the two as Serbian gets control right after the pinfall. Now, now Sabbath again turning it around in his favor. I mean, this is. Malcolm Serbian has to stay on the offensive to, you know. Keep the pre he's got to keep the pressure on. Oh, nice double drop into the cover. One, two, no. And remember, he's all of it is on the line for Malcolm. His number. He if he loses, he is the very first entrant into the breakdown match. That is very true. And he, obviously, no one wants that. I mean, no one wants to be in that first five at least. And Malcolm will be the first man to go out there and suffer the wrath of the whole twenty-nine men. That is very true, and and I'm not saying that Malcolm Serbian can't, you know, hang for all 29, but the probability of <sighs> making that happen drops severely. Oh, the roll, quick, up, roll, roll up, roll up, one, two, 
only a two count. That would have been a huge win for Malcolm Serbian tonight. I mean, that would put Sabbath as the number one entry in the breakdown. Oh! Sabbath hits that little patent and running knee, and he goes into a cover. One. One. Two. Oh, oh and he kicks out. That's That was a, out of nowhere, that knee strike. But wait a second. Oh, oh, Serbian another. again a roll up. One. One. Two. two. No. Oh, this is this is getting good. This match is getting very, very good. It it is, and you never know where um, the next. You never know where that first pinfall is going to come from, or anything. And Serbian sidesteps that drop kick, but and charges in to a float of her neck breaker. This is why, you know, you have to be ready for anything, because I mean, sidesteps like that, they, those can cost you the match. I mean, you see that big power bomb, and now Serbian again. Another power bomb, but this time bridges it. One, two, only a two count. And he gets out. Ooh. Oh, the forearm. And now look at Malcolm Serbian there doing his juke and jive. Again, white boy. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had some nice moves right there. Oh, here he goes. Tomahawk twist. Ooh. Oh, and it hits it. And now Malcolm Serbian going for the cover. One, One, two, two. Oh. no, Tomahawk Twist is not enough. He now got right rushed. in the referee's face yeah, there. He's rushing to Terry Gates to tell him off, but he gets pulled back into an uppercut. Wait and a second. Sabbath's calling for it. Sabbath turns him around. He's got him in that front face lock. Divine intervention. Sabbath hooks the far leg. One. Two. Oh my wow. god. Malcolm Serbian kicks out of the Sabbath's signature maneuver. And oh wait, Sabbath oh, oh the super kick. My god. My intervention didn't work, so he must have figured the super kick will one, two, two three, three, and that one's over. I mean, it was it wasn't mere seconds ago that he got face planted by Sabbath Divine Intervention, so getting come coming back and getting drilled with the super kick can't feel good. Exactly, and I well, I guess now we know who's entering number one. Yep, unfortunately, Malcolm Serbian is going to be the first entrant in the breakdown match. He will enter number one, Hazard will enter number 30, with Monroe entering 29. Those are the only confirmed numbers, the rest will be randomly generated on the night of. That is very true, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited for breakdown. It's shaping up to be one heck of an event. We got Every title is going to be defended almost, other than the uh, Hardcore Championship, which is still going to be Hardcore Series <sighs> impl implication matches. You know, and I, I'm assuming that the TPP title is going to be defended. I mean, Melinda well, Girls, Melinda, uh, yeah, someone to announce at the beginning of the night that uh, Samara will be announcing his number one contender uh, after our main event match. That is very true, and, and uh, you know, we're getting ready for our main event here, and I'm Really excited for this one. We've got Jamal Johnson facing the current international champion, Exquisite. And Jamal has been on a big roll lately. He's three, uh, two, the past two shows, he's been in the main event and he has won. He beat Jerry Graham in a hardcore series match and then he won in basically a, t a handicap match last week. Got a little assist from, uh, from Sabbath, but he still picked up the victory on James Braden in that main event, and now he's coming out for his third straight main event as he takes on the international champion, Explicit. You know, and, and I, I know I said this before, and I may have twisted my words up a little bit last week, but Jamal Johnson, although he gets kind of booze, mixed booze and cheers, he's he's good. He's, he's very good. He's great. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't care about the fans or anything like that. He cares only about himself. And um, his work, but you can't deny the effectiveness of what he does in that ring. That is very true, and I think this will be a really good matchup between uh, Jamal Johnson and Explicit tonight, and uh, I, I can't wait to get it underway. Oh, uh, and Explicit was part of that match last week. Um, he took out Jamal's team captain, Craig Hazard, and they both went brawling up the ramp. To continue, and again, we did. We forgot to uh, mention this earlier. This is a pick your poison match in which Hazard pick explosive opponent for the evening. 
That is true, and it looks like Jamal Johnson is asking for a microphone here. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jamal the St. Johnson. And if you didn't know this, obviously you haven't been watching the main event picture for the last three weeks, including tonight. And as for tonight, I go against somebody that is not even in my height range, not even in my weight class, not even in the class of the professional wrestling that I'm in, not in the same, the same ring, not in the same bracket, not even. The only thing that he has even close to me is that we're in the same company. No, known as explicit. Now, yes, he's only 175 pounds, and I'm just 210 pounds, but that's okay because I'm going to not try to hurt him even though I will be using him as stepping stone for me to skyrocket straight to the top. And y'all see this as breakdown is next week. And y'all will see Saint do what he does in the breakdown match. Now, with that being said, explicit, get out here. Now, well, <laughs> them, them's his fighting words. What is, oh my god, Lily, I've had enough for you tonight. Anyway, here's the international champion. I doubt he'll take too kindly to those words from Saint the, you know, the Saint Jamal Johnson, Jamal the Saint Johnson talking smack as the international champion shows off his championship. That's really all he needs to show Saint is he is the international champion. He did beat Brick Wall at Over the Limit. And he will, uh, hopefully, in his mind, retain against Craig Hazard uh, again at Breakdown. That is very true. And, you know, Explicit always build as the ultimate underdog. You know, but in this matchup, he's not really an underdog. He's kind of on a level plank. I mean, they, yes, there is a weight difference between Jamal Johnson and Explicit, but they're relatively close in uh, their weight classes. Yeah, I mean, Jamal, like he said, he's only, I mean, 40 pounds, it sounds like a lot, but it's 175 to 210, so it's not that big of a discrepancy, and we're, I assume we'll see a high-octane, high, highly technical match. Exactly, and this is going to be, like you said, you know, it, it's going to be fast, it's going to be quick, and it's going to be technical, and these guys, they know how to do it. Look at that, the referee telling them to get it underway here. A circle in the ring and then a walk-up right in the middle. And, and that, that little bit of weight, though, I mean, it does go a long ways. I mean, you know, Jamal Johnson getting the advantage early. Snapmare into a drop kick. Already. And he taunts the crowd, letting out a big yell or woo of victory. He transitions into a side wrist lock and then a front face lock and then a side head lock. And then explicit transitions right into that. And then a waist lock from behind, drop kicking him. Ooh. Oh, and he runs right into a big, uh... The dragon whip. Yeah, the dragon whip kick, I guess, is uh, the best way to really word that. He pretty much... It's like Japanese a... Japanese arm drag. You know, and uh, the, my only concern for Jamal Johnson or for Explicit is getting overconfident in this matchup because oh, both of these guys can end it on the turn oh, yes. of the hat. I mean, um... You can get that spear from Saint from any direction. That standing kick will knock you out from Explicit. Explicit is already on the top. Ooh. And he catches Saint with that uh, float over diving that neck breaker right there. And this is what we were talking about. I mean, it's going to be fast. I mean, we're already seeing oh. big moves from both of them. See, you see Saint's targeting the legs as he goes for that chop block to throw off the speed of Explicit. Explicit gets whipped. Into the quarter and oh, Saint runs up, runs up on him like he's a wall, and then grabs him into a nice float over suplex. One, one, only a oh. one count though on the international champion. It seems been extremely impressive over the past three weeks, and I mean his only loss really since he debuted in that four way, re debuted in that four way match, and that's his that's his only loss since returning. Exactly. Is, I mean, he's on a roll. I mean, he he's he's pretty. He took Jerry Graham, who's not an amateur, and he took James Braden. He beat. He's he well. 
at the time he beat what TCO comprised of. Oh, oh a nice it looked like a suicide dive, but he turned it into a cross body as he dove through the middle ropes and cross bodied him. But Saints beating Jerry Graham and James Brady in successing weeks in the uh, six man tag and the hardcore series match, and now he's taking on the international champion. And we'll see how this goes as oh, explosive drops the leg. Well, either way, no matter who wins this matchup, the fans are going to go home happy. I mean, this... Oh, of course. I mean, and, you know, Jamal Johnson showing why he'll do what it takes to win, you know, with that, that eye rake. The referee did not see it. I mean, even the ref did... Oh, what's Saint going for here? Oh, a big top rope neck breaker. Splizzard's got... Reeling after that. Two. No. He kicks out. But Explicit, the heart of a champion, keeping the pace and, you know, getting right back to his feet after that pinfall. Fighting back with the jawbreaker and another uh, neck-to-knee neck breaker. Oh, this, oh, that move is vicious. He's placing his, for the people that don't see it at home, he's curling the arm back from the elbow, placing the wrist behind his head with the palm down and stomping, you know, causing, like, right there. Oh, Causing the wrist to snap, the elbow to get stomped on, and the shoulder to, uh, you know, work in a way that's not supposed to be. And then he follows up with a nice German. And again with that Wu-Tang, shades of Ric Flair. Nice spin thrust kick right there. Off the ropes into a monkey flip. We usually see that from Landon Sane. Now Explicit. Oh. You know, this is what he's known for. He's known for picking up the pace, keeping it going quick and fast. In a, a, Another a springboard net breaker, this time from the apron One, on the cover. Two. Oh, oh Saint gets his shoulder up. This is a close and co closely contested match. Right now, Saint, I would say Saint has the edge with all the damage. Oh, back suplex. Oh, he plants him. Going for the cover. One. One. Two. Two. He was posing, and he wasn't even trying to cover him. Otherwise, he might have got him there. All he did was put his foot on the chest, so I'm sure Explicit feels a little bit disrespected. But he shoots the leg. He's got the ankle lock locked in, and he's working that leg. He's, I mean, he's focusing on the leg of the legs of Explicit to hinder his high flying ability. Now he's stomping, he dropped the elbow, and now he's stomping at the back of the knee. But Explicit gets out of that attempted running drop kick. But as you saw, Jamal Johnson backed away and then caught him with that that knee face buster. Oh wow! Nice, nice, fluid movements from Jamal into the arm to the knee, followed by that knee drop to the head. Ooh. Oh, and a Tope Atomico made one of Eddie Guerrero's favorite moves from the apron. Wait a second! Tiger suplex with the bridge. One, one, two, two. No, oh, that's not, not enough. Oh, explicit! explicit. Much a hip toss count. into a soup. A hip toss into a suplex right there. Now what's Explicit thinking here? Explicit, what's he doing here? Jumps to the top rope, leaps over oh, with the clothesline. A nice springboard clothesline right there by the international champion. One, two, two. no, Saint gets the shoulder up. And this is, this like you said, you know, this match was going to be fast and it's living up to the, the hype. I mean, this is a fast match. Nice, a nice other uh, windmill thrust kick. Saint tries to grab Explicit, but who runs to the top and oh, <laughs> missile drop kick from the ring to the outside. And now Explicit showing that he can go a little hardcore, you know, taking it to the outside there. But Jamal, oh wow, did he just? Off the, yeah, he threw him right off the steps, and Jamal is lining uh, up. Oh, and he's <laughs> he cross bodied him right there, but both men are down. It looks like that move uh, hurt him just as much as hurt Explicit. And both men get to their feet at the same time, and both men get into the ring. Attempted uh, that Tope Atomico, but Explicit drop kick to oh. the face. Mm. He's going to go for a cover off that, and I would too. Two. Two. Oh, no. Same missed the Tope Atomico, and Explicit immediately got, grabbed him and drilled him with that drop kick. This is an exciting... I'm loving this. I mean, this is quick, and it's, it's getting... It's high. F oh, another oh, springboard. Nice springboard crossbody splash right there. Oh, explicit counters a saint right there and drives a fist right into his head. It's not very often you get a pay-per-view quality matchup right in your uh, in your main event for on sure. a week. Yeah, for free. 
drop kicking him off the apron. Now Saints on the top rope. What's Saint gonna do here? Moonsault. Oh. oh my God! Did you see the height he got on that moonsault? That was ridiculous. That was dangerous too. Saint can't be feeling good. His abdomen's got to be shot after that moonsault. What is it? Why is what? Saint? What is Saint? Th there are disqualifications. What are you doing? He's throwing it in the ring. It's Saint. The, re the referee. Oh, the referee. Then see the spinning thrust kick sending Saint over the top rope. Oh, and another flying crossbody. This time from Explicit. And as you see, Explicit holding his ribs there, that may have taken more out of him than he had anticipated. Oh, I mean, Saint's been working over that abdomen for that spear, so you never know. And he drops the elbow right into the Saint's head oh, as, a they, leg drop. as they work their way into the ring. And another splash up the springboard. Looks to the, or into the cover. One, two, only a two count, though. He's got him in a side wrist lock. And now explicit, what's he thinking there? Oh no, Saint counters from you know with that snapmare. Oh, and a, a spinning Van Dam kick. And Which another moon salt. Yeah, another another moon salt into the cover hooks far leg. One. One. Two. No. This is this is getting really, you know, kinda of, it feels like it's getting personal between these two. It's almost like yeah, a one upsmanship. It's developing as it happens. What's Saint looking to do here? Oh my oh, god! A nice move, a rolling stunner of sorts, and he goes to recover one, two, two. no. And that that was a new move out in Saint's playbook, it seems. Well Saint is, Jamal Johnson is a student of the game. Definitely. He's definitely a student of the game, but what's Jamal wait a second. Is Jamal looking for that spear? I think he is. Oh no. Explicit getting back to his feet. This could be it. Oh my god, Explicit counters with that, that hip toss hip. suplex. He goes for the cover. One. One. Two. two. No, only a two count. And now wow. Explicit trying to keep control. Oh, a knee lift. I mean, that was that was great timing and uh, effectiveness by Explicit, but Saint is right back on the offense. And this is, uh, Explosive's got to work on this, because a lot of his matches, he's the underdog. He's the guy that's fighting from behind, and that just, it, it won't, it won't help. Wait a second, quick roll up here by oh. Explosive, overshot it a little bit, but hooks the leg. One, One. two, three, and a huge upset. Wow, that came out of nowhere. I mean, right when we were saying he was down and out, a quick roll up, and our international champion derails. Jamal Johnson. I don't know if he derailed him because Saint pretty much dominated that match, but I'll say that if the international champion beat Saint, it was it was one hell of a match too. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm almost speechless, and we still have to hear from from some of our finally our world champion. We haven't heard from him since that opening that promo from the first day or the first show he was champion. Exactly, and then he, he got j j jammed into that title defense, and, you know, five days after he won the title, and now, you know, three weeks later, four weeks later. Finally, he's back after seeing, the last time we saw him, Sabbath speared, or Braden speared Sabbath in the, in the title match, and that ended, and Samara walked him back. We haven't seen him since. It, exactly, and we all assumed we'd see him that following week, but then Dyer came out and said, no, you won't see him until breakdown, and we get to see him before breakdown, so I'm I'm excited to see, you know, what Samaro is going to say or what he has to say. Um, you know, Melinda Guerrero basically called her husband out and said that he was lying about saying that he wanted Samaro to be, you know, healed and everything like that. So I'm. But it's a matter of perspective on whether he meant he was trying to keep Samaro off the show or if he was trying to keep the ch everyone away from the champion so that the champion's not at risk. It's very true, very true. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm super excited here, and I'm assuming that in just a few moments we're just waiting to hear some Arrow's music so uh, we know when he's coming out. That's all we're waiting for now, and I guess it's that time. It's time to hear from our TPP champ. Wait a second. Oh, Sabbath from behind. Now close fist punches here on, on oh, the man. TPP champ. And he's got the, the title belt. What's he doing? Oh, my God. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Okay. This is not happening like this. Okay. Samurara was supposed to come out and tell us who he was going to defend his title against at Breakdown. But clearly, Samurara is incapable of making that decision. So I'm going to have to make an authoritative deci decision for the Power Plant Championship immediately. So, at Breakdown, it's going to be Zack Samurara defending his TPP Championship against you, Sabbath. You to will compete at over the, at breakdown for the TPP championship in a one on one matchup. That's just the way it is. Sabbath, you're gonna need all the luck in the world because Samararo is gonna be he's gonna be a great defending champion. There's no doubt about that. So just save it until breakdown too. Oh my god, I so there's our main event. Diehard just named Sabbath <clears throat> the number one contender. He's giving him another shot at the championship after his own guy screwed Sabbath uh, two or three weeks ago. And I, I don't know what to make of this other than that, I mean, he, he's looking out for Samaro, I guess. Sabbath jumped Samaro, so he's giving Samaro the opportunity to get Sabbath back. And sadly, it looks like Samaro is in TCO's pocket. You know, and I just, as much as I don't want to say that that's true, I, I think you're correct. I, I think Samararo is in cahoots with with Die Hard. I think it's the, the guy who was the biggest crusader against Die Hard has finally fallen to the evil and darkness that, that is um, Die Hard. That is true, and folks, you do not want to miss Breakdown. It, is, you, it will be available uh, next Sunday. You definitely want to be there. If you haven't purchased your tickets, purchase your tickets. I'm Christopher Billings. I'm Tyson Sage. Have a good night, everybody.